Good morning. Let's just continue uh, thinking today about the spoken word. I have more to say about that, and I, I want to burrow down a little deeper. We went through the text, and I'll read it again. And I highlighted some of the interpretive issues, the background issues of uh, what the Pharisees were doing and what the religious leaders were doing in terms of diminishing the spoken word by swearing according to this, that, or the other thing. Again, verse 33, again, uh, this is Matthew 5, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it's the throne of God, or by the earth, for it's his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it's the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Uh, let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this is, comes from evil. Now, I stop short of saying that you should never take a vow. I, I think there's a place for a vow. We take vows when we have a marital covenant, for example. Uh, those vows are important. We're held to account on those vows. There's nothing inherently wrong with taking a vow. Ecclesiastes gives some, us some instruction about the importance of vows and that the Lord takes those vows very seriously. But I think that's actually the key. The Lord takes them very seriously. So what are the implications of our spoken word and our statements of yes and no and the kinds of ways that we use our words uh, for us in our lives? Let me give you a few. Um, first, saying you will do it means that you are supposed to do it. You know, if, if you ever, ever talk to a child and you say that you'll do something and then they say, do you promise? Do you promise? Well, sometimes when you keep having to say you promise, it almost begins to beg the question of whether or not when you actually say it, you mean it. <laughs> if you have to double down with an oath all the time. The Lord takes you seriously at your word. Saying you will do it means you will do it. That's true for marriage. That's true of with our kids. That's true of a church commitment. Um, it's true of when you say you'll be somewhere. Secondly, saying it means you mean it. Let's think about that. What do I mean? Saying it means you mean it. Sometimes we get in conflict and we say something rash and we go, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. No, you did mean it. You, you might feel embarrassed that you meant it. You may regret it. You may not have thought of the implications of all that it meant, but you said what you meant and you need to own that. You need to own that. Third, it means that if that's the case, we need to curate our words very, very carefully. We need to be careful with this when it comes to uh, things that we might put on social media. We need to be careful of this when it comes to the way we might talk to people that we love. We need to be careful here when we write things in print and so forth. Um, and fourth, it means that your integrity is at stake. In other words, if your words can't be trusted, then you can't be trusted. So say things carefully because you will say what you mean and you need to think about what you say and you need to think about the follow through with any kind of commitment you make. Take your words seriously because God takes you at your word. Have a good day.